think? Where's less than? Where's greater than? Where are we shaping? We want more than that, right? We want greater than negative. The greater than stuff, what's bigger than negative one? Is negative two bigger than negative 1.3? No. That would make sense. That's why we cover, have to cover number lines to be in here, right? So we know where greater and less than is. Is zero bigger than or greater than negative 1.23? Well, that should tell you what side you're shading right there. So we're shading this side. Right there. Okay, what I'd like you to do right now, since we just practiced the table stuff and you have a calculator, find, do this for me. Find your negative z-score right now on your table or your calculator. Actually, I'd like you to, to use the table first, if you can. You all should have a table. Use the table. Find the z-score negative 1.23. Look up when you found it so I know you're all done, okay? Look up when you found the z-score of negative 1.23. Okay, good. Good, good. You all get it? Here's the question. The area that, that you just found, please watch up here for, for a while. The area that you just found, is that this area or is that this area? What do you think? Is it the area to the right or to the left? Okay. The, the table always, it's not smarter than your problem is. Okay. It's not smarter than you are. It's always going to give you the area to the left. Even if you want the area to the right, it's going to give you the area to the left. Are you, you understand that? It doesn't change depending on the problem you're doing. That is a piece of paper. It cannot change. Okay, it's, it's already written on. It always gives you the area to the left. So here's what this does. This says if I looked up negative 1.23 in my little chart there, in my table A2, it's not going to give me this area. It's actually going to give me this area, which is why we draw a picture of this thing. How much did it give you for this? 0.10. Wait, 0.10 what? Like that? Okay. How many people were able to find that? Good, okay. You just have to be smarter than the problem now. Now, now we weren't actually looking for this area. We wanted stuff bigger than this number. We're not looking for this. So if you put this as your answer, is that your answer? No. No, that would be wrong. That would be finding the area or the probability of selecting a thermometer that's less than negative 1.2. We want, we want greater. So the question is, if I know this area is 0 0.1093, how can I find this area? Well, explain, explain, subtract that from one. Why? That's the whole reason why we set that equal to one, right? So that we knew if this whole area is equal to one, then this area, the area that we want is one minus. They're complementary areas. They have to add up to one. If this is a little bit of one, this is the rest of it. Or in other words, you're going to get point eight nine zero seven. Yeah. That's your area. That's your probability. Notice how this this is the area I wanted. It wasn't to the left. Your table will only give you the area to the left. That's all it will do. If you're not looking for the area to the left, you got to subtract one. Or I'm sorry, subtract it from one. Subtract it from one. That's going to give you the area to the right. Your table will never give you the area to the right. I hope you understood that. Feel okay with it. Good. So the way you answer this question is there's an 89.07% chance that you are going to randomly select a thermometer and it will have a reading greater than negative 1.23. So with these, you always want us to answer in a complete sentence? I would, yeah. And yeah, get in the habit of that because in chapter 7 and 8, you're going to be interpreting. interpreting I keep saying that. that wrong word. <laughs> I'm going to invent it, just put a dictionary, that way I'm not wrong, I can't be wrong. Interpreting uh, these things, and you are going to have to write out sentences. So I'm going to be lazy, I'm going to say probability of selecting a thermometer with a reading greater than negative 1.23 degrees is 89.07%. 89.07%. Now, calculator people. Calculator people. If you want to not use a table, you don't have to use a table. you got a calculator. But you need to know how to punch these numbers in correctly. Okay? If you're going to do your area from the left to right, does this area start at negative 10? 
No, this area actually starts at negative 1.23. Do you follow? So on your calculator, do this right now if you have one. Go back to your normal CDF. You should know how to get there at this point. Plug in your negative 1.23. Press your comma. Where does it end? Yeah, let's just use 10. It doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't end, actually. It doesn't end. But we're going to use 10 because it doesn't make a difference after that. Did it give you 0 0.8907 and some numbers after that? What, 0 0.065? Wait, how come it's 0 0.065 on yours and it's 0 0.07 here? The table's out of it, yeah, for sure. So you get 0 0.065 and so, 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 so. So it's a little bit more accurate than your table's going to be. And that, that's the case because it's always rounding. Let's try one more. We'll just talk about it. We're not going to actually do it. I don't think we'll have time. But at least we can talk about it. Okay, so same question, same information. Probability of selecting a the thermometer between. negative 2 degrees and 1.50 degrees. Negative 2 degrees and 1.50 degrees. Hey, we have two values now. We have two x's, not just one. What are you going to do first? Z-score, of course. Yeah, that's how we change from a normal to a standard normal. So we're going to do a z-score for negative 2, you know what, if you do a z-score for negative 2, do you know how much you're going to get out of that? Negative for this case, for this special example, because our mean 0 and our is 0, you're going to get negative 2. Do this work again, and you're going to get negative 2. You with me? What are you going to get for 1.5? Yeah, you're 1.5. Again, this is a very special case. It doesn't happen all the time like that, okay? After you find your z-score, what are you going to do next? So here's your picture. Of course, zero's in the middle. Now we have two z-scores to place. We've got negative two. Negative two is to the left of zero. 1.5 is to the right of zero. You just got to tell me where we need to shade. Do we need to shade to the left? To the right, to the middle, or to all of it? We want between those two values. Between this value and this value is represented by the z score between, or the area between this z score and this z score. So, in other words, this stuff right here. Hey, how many people feel okay looking up numbers in, a, in the table? How many people feel okay doing this on a calculator? Here's your two ways. If you look up, please watch here, we'll, we'll have another 15 seconds or so. If you look up this z-score, it's going to give you all of this area. Double check this for you, if you like, but this is going to be 0 0.9332. This area is 0 0.9332. Do I want all of this area? No. See, I don't want this area. This area is 0. 0, 0.0228. Double check that on your own if you'd like. How can I find this? If I have all of this and I don't want this, subtract them. So our area, or in other words, our probability is 0 0.9332 minus 0 0.0228. How much is that going to give you? What is it? 9104. 9104? Yeah. That says you have a 91% chance of selecting a thermometer that's between these two readings. 2 degrees and 1.5 degrees. On your calculator, it's even easier. You don't have to look up two things. You just put normal CDF, negative 2, 1.5, enter, you get the same exact value. Feel pretty good about this? Okay. As your slave driver, I'm going to continue to teach statistics to you.
So we're going to do one thing today. We're going to go backwards of what we've been doing. You see, uh, lately on your in this class, we've been looking up z-scores with your table with your calculator and finding out areas. You remember that from last time, right? We spent quite a bit of time doing that. There is another thing that we can do with this table and with your calculators. We can look, look up an area, or in other words, a probability, and find a z-score from that. That table works both ways. So not only remember how you can find a z-score on the side and the top and it gives you an area, we can look up an area and therefore give you a z-score. Does that make sense to you? We're going to learn how to do that today. I'll show you that sometimes we can find probabilities of having uh, a certain value or under, a certain value over, or between two values by doing this. So we're going to be finding z-scores from area. We're going to be using the area or a probability to find a z-score. We'll be working backwards. So we're going to work backwards. by using an area, or in other words, probability, to find a distance from the mean, or in other words, a z-score. Now, there's only really two things we need to do. The first thing we need to do is be able to draw an appropriate picture for this thing. So we've got to draw a picture, and then we're also going to have to find the z-score from an area. So step one, you're going to be drawing a picture, just like we've been doing every single time. Step two, we're going to learn how to use the table in reverse. Or your calculator, I can show you that too. On your calculator, you're going to find something. Uh, I think it's number three on your distribution. You're going to have something that says inverse normal, INV norm. Inverse normal means backwards of normal. So when you do inverse of something, it undoes, the un undoes. it undoes it, undoes it real well. It, it undoes the operation, so inverse normal will be the opposite of looking up a z-score. It'll tell you a z-score from the area. So you're going to be looking for inverse norm. If you have a calculator, you might want to find that. Are you ready to do an example here? Yeah, you seem super stoked about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right, cool. Here's how your examples for this type of problem are going to look. Now, we're going to use the thermometer example again, the thermometer criteria, which means a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. I'm not going away from that yet. That's for the next section. But right now, we're going to keep it very, very simple as far as the mean and standard deviation goes. That way, our distribution is always standard normal. Glad you're here if you're with me on that. I hope you went back and refreshed your memory on what a standard normal distribution is, what the variable is for this particular section, chapter, which is continuous random variable, and that a z-score will translate a normal distribution into standard normal. That should always be in your head for this stuff, okay? That's what we're doing. So, in our example for the thermometers, thermometers, what I want to do is find the z-score that represents 